Hey guys, welcome back. This is Bimsy Codes here. In this lesson, we're going to be looking at setting up and navigating through the Unity editor. To get started, we're going to want to install Unity and Visual Studio on our computers. So I have the links to these downloads in the descriptions. So we're going to want to click this button to download the Unity Hub setup. And then we're also going to go to this link over here. And we're going to want to download Visual Studio. So hover over hit this button and we'll click Community 2019. And that'll start the download for Visual Studios as well. So once we've downloaded both of the installers, we're going to want to run both of these and install both setups. So that's for Unity Hub and Visual Studio. I'll see you once that's done. So you're going to want to go ahead and run your Unity Hub. Now you can see all of your installed versions of Unity over here. Um, for this tutorial series, I'm going to be running 2020.1.16 F1. Now you can add or locate existing Unity or new Unity versions. So if we do that, it'll open up an interface for us and it'll show us all of the potential Unity versions we can add. I'm not going to do this for now. Um, now it's got a tab for learning. So here's a bunch of pre-built tutorials Unity provides and also the community tab where there's a bunch of things you can share with the community. Um, for now, we're going to go to projects and I've already got the project set up over here. So what you're going to want to do is create a new project. And uh, I'm just going to call this one test project. But feel free to name it Grocery Catcher, since that's the name of the project that we're going to be creating in the future. So test, and I'm going to navigate. We're going to want to select a place for this to save. So I'm going to put it in Bims Code Tutorials, and I'm going to create a new folder for this called Test Project. Select folder. And then in this interface here, we can actually select the preset default for Unity to import with. So you've got 2D. 3D, high definition resolution pipeline, and also the universal render pipeline. Sorry, high definition render pipeline. Um, we can just hit information for a bit of information on these projects. Uh, but for now, I'm going to select the 3D option and I'm going to hit create. So once your project opens up, you should see something similar to this, which is the basic Unity editor. Before we get into editor navigation, I'm going to quickly turn on a few settings for us. So we're going to want to go to edit preferences. And if you're running Unity version 2020.1.16 F1 or higher, we'll actually be able to adjust this editor views color. So the editor theming. So we've got two options, light or dark. Now I prefer dark, so I'm going to keep it as is. And the second option would be the external tools settings. And we just want to make sure that the external script editor that we're using is the one that we downloaded previously. So I think in this tutorial we're going to be using 2019, but I've got 2017 selected by default. So closing out this window, let's get into editor navigation. At the top here we can see all of our little tabs which provide different functionality from the Unity editor. Um, we've got things like file, edit, which are fairly standard. Then we've got assets, game objects, components. We've got window settings, so we can add or remove windows. And we've also got the help option that Unity provides. Um, now you'll see the main screens that we have here are the scene, the game, the hierarchy, the project, and the inspector tabs. These are the core tabs we need to make games in Unity. So the first thing you're going to want to do is select a window layout that's efficient for your workflow. So I'm going to go into the windows here go to layouts and we've got a bunch of default and custom layouts here. So I'll just demo them real quick. We've got the two by three split, the four split, the default, the tall, and the wide. So essentially what these are is they're just different layouts for these scene view, the hierarchy, the project, the inspector, all the core windows that we need to create games in Unity. My favorite, however, is the 2 by 3 split, and that's what I'm going to be using for this tutorial series. Now, if you, if you what I like to do is just drag this project window and sort of attach it to my hierarchy, but along the bottom hand side, just like that, and then I'll drag that one up. So that's the view I like the most, and we can actually save this one out as a custom layout here if we want. So let's just save that and let's call this uh, Bimsy default. And here we've got our own layout now defined. All of these windows have a crucial role in the game dev process. So we'll go through one by one and explain what each of them does. First window over here, the hierarchy window, is in charge of handling all of the game objects in our scene. So this is our scene over here in the hierarchy. If we want to just 
as an example, add a new object. So I'll go ahead and add this cube. You can now see it here in our hierarchy window. Now from our hierarchy window, we can actually rename stuff. So let's just call this rename and we can create other objects. We can create 3D objects, planes, all that sort of stuff. And we can also create these objects from this tab up here in the game objects tab. So if we want to add, I don't know, like a directional light, a second one, we can just throw it in the scene here and it'll appear straight away in our hierarchy. Um, so the scene view over here is essentially a collection of all the game objects in our scene. So this is where we're going to be doing most of the game making process. When we add new game objects to our scene, we can move them around in here. If we want to have, if this cube, for instance, wants to represent a player, we can add some scripts to it so it moves around the game scene. And this is sort of the view that'll best describe what's um, how our game is laid out. Some important navigational tools for our scene view. If we've got something selected like this cube, we can press W, E, or R to move, rotate, or scale that object accordingly. We can select one of the axes or multiple axes at once to scale it along those. We can change the perspective of this pivot by going from pivot point to center which for this particular thing, the pivot is the center point, so it doesn't really do much. Um, we can also change this position from global to local, which the, the local field would orient it based on its pivot point instead of its um, global point in, the, in this scene view here. Um, now we've also got these axes over here, which sort of represent all the different uh, three dimensions of our game. So if we want to select this axis, it'll it'll just hover the camera. So our local view in the scene is a representation of whatever this axis was. And you can see the name of that there is right, front, top. Um, we can change our view in the scene from perspective to isometric. And also we can change it from being 3D to 2D. Now this helps if we want to do some user interface design, that sort of stuff. We've also got this little drop down over here where we can change stuff from being shaded to wireframes to shaded wireframes. There's a lot of different settings we can set up here to sort of see what our game looks like. If we've got too many overdraws, which helps us sort of optimize the render. Uh, yeah, there's plenty of different options here for us to mess around with while creating our game. The next window we'll take a look at is the games window. I usually like to change this from being free aspect to 16 by nine, because that's just per the perspective of the game. And most games that I end up building are this ratio here. So the game window is taking a look at what the main camera's perspective sees. So this main camera's perspective is essentially the same as the game window. Now, if we disable this main camera in our, in our hierarchy over here, you'll see we don't have any displays for the game to actually render. Um, and we can toggle the displays by selecting multiple different displays, but at the moment our game only has the one. So here we can sort of scale in and out our game, but that doesn't really do much for us right now. If we hit play, this gives us an accurate representation of what our game will look like. So if you could imagine this cube being our character, we can start moving this cube around the scene. So if we're hitting WASD and moving our character around, that would be an accurate representation of how the character would move. There are a few tools we can use here in our game display. One of them being the maximize on play flag. When we tick that up, then when we hit play, the game will actually maximize across our unity display. And this helps us with our play testing on occasion. Um, we also have the mute audio, which will essentially mute all audio being played. Um, we've got a few stats we can take a look at, which sort of helps us uh, find our FPS, our CPU, all that sort of stuff that's important later on. Once our game gets pretty big, this helps us sort of optimize the game, see what's um, what might be choking up the CPU if things are running slow on the FPS and stuff like that. Uh, this is, statistics is usually the first thing you want to take a look at. Um, and then we've also got gizmos, so we can display what sort of gizmos, but it's important to know that these gizmos aren't actually part of the game. So when we do our final game build, we won't see these gizmos in that game display there. But there's a bunch of different gizmos we can enable or disable. And um, as an example of these gizmos, we can just take a look at this. This is a d directional light, and that has that sort of sun icon. So that's just what a gizmo is. Our camera has that little camera icon. So those don't actually display in the final version of the game. They just help us build the game. Now we've got our projects window. This window here just sort of shows us the hierarchy of all of the resources we have in our game. So if we were to create a new folder, let's say materials, and we wanted to create a material to apply to this cube here, we would do that in our projects directory here. So let's create a material and we'll call this one test for now. Test, I'm gonna just make this blue and let's throw this guy onto our 
onto our object in the game scene. So this is just sort of where we'd store all of our resources that we use. So you can see we've already got our sample scene, which is this scene here, and that's saved into our assets. If we were to create scripts, prefabs, any of that sort of stuff would be dropped into the assets folder here using the project window. And finally, we've got our inspector window. So what the inspector window does is it lets us mess around with properties on an object or a resource. So we've got, if we click this plane, we can now see we've got a transform, a plane, a mesh render, a mesh collider, all this sort of stuff that sort of changes how this object would interact with itself or other objects in the game. So if we go ahead and disable this mesh renderer from the inspector, you can see that we're no longer rendering that mesh out. Um, and that's sort of what the inspector is in charge of doing, handling the properties that the game uses. All right, that wraps up our lesson on basic Unity editor navigation. And in the next lesson, we're gonna be creating the scene for our first game. I'll see you there.